In Prague, we talked about Intrepid being uh, focus on that being netbooks and mobile devices. What do you see as the focuses for Jaunty? Um, so that, that, that work that we did in Prague for netbooks and mobile devices is really paid off for Ubuntu. I mean, we, we now have, I think, 14 different, or 14 different devices out there that have, that have Ubuntu or a derivative. And that really, that came straight from all the energy that we had in Prague talking about what it would take to make a great experience on a netbook. Um, so that work continues, and the team that's focused on it at Canonical continues to grow, um, and, and there's, a lot, there's a lot more to be done in that space. Um, 810 actually turned out to be a surprisingly important server release. Um, the Java work came together, and that, that, that's a real um, sort of key capability on the server for app servers. And uh, so I, I think you'll see a lot of work around virtualization in the cloud, um, building on the Java app server stuff. Um, we've had some extensive conversations we think will make it possible for people to deploy you know, with one command or with a series of commands to create their own little EC2, literally. If you've got four servers, you just deploy a Ubuntu server on there, a couple of commands on them, and you've got your own cloud, EC2 compatible cloud, and then you can, you can use the same management tools that are being developed to talk to Amazon EC2. You can use those for your own cloud. You can develop an image that you can test in your own cloud and deploy it on EC2, or you can take something that's working in EC2 and deploy it on your own little cloud. And that's a fantastic, that's a fantastic capability that I think is going to be really popular and really interesting and, and a sort of a, a foundational platform that people mm. will build very interesting stuff mm. around. And on the desktop, you're looking at notifications and the changes to uh, that system. Yeah, we have a, there are a whole bunch of areas that we're interested in the, in the desktop user experience. Um, I would describe them as the glue areas. Um, so rather than um, uh, the functionality of a specific application at this stage, what we're doing as a team is looking at the pieces between all the applications. And notifications are like that, you know? So multiple applications all throw notifications at the user. So it's something that's glue, it kind of binds all those applications, it's between all those applications. Let's, let's make that really beautiful. Let's make that really stylish. And, and the philosophy we've brought to that is to say, is to try and, 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 and take things out and thereby make, some, make something that, that, that is more fit for purpose. Uh, and what we've taken out of the notification system is interactivity. But doing that allows us to, to make it less intrusive, to make it um, uh, a classier presentation, and it forces us to create other mechanisms for the interaction where interaction is required, so persistence mechanisms. It forces us to ask questions of the upstreams. Is this notification something which the user absolutely has to see, even if they were looking away at the time or they'd gone to make a cup of coffee? Um, or is it something which is useful information that can be transient? Um, and if, it's, if, it's, if it falls into this very tightly defined set of things that can be done as notifications, then it belongs there. Otherwise, here are a range of persistent, persistence mechanisms, you know, things that will show up in the, in the panel or things that will show up in the desktop effectively as, as, as ways to, to tell you about something that happened while you were away um, and, and, and not paying attention. So, so notifications are kind of the tip of the iceberg. Um, we've also done quite a lot of thinking about the panels and, and status indicators on those, and uh, so it was fun to be at the, at the, at the GNOME Hackfest. There's a lot of discussion about that. The KDE guys have, have interesting ideas about that as well. Um, launching, switching between applications, window management, these are all areas we're very interested in. Fortunately, there's a lot of other interest in this across other, other communities, and we'll participate in those, but we're also you know, not averse to, to, to driving some things that are experimental. We'll, we'll build them in Canonical, we'll build them in Ubuntu. If they're popular, they'll be embraced at Free Desktop, they'll be embraced in KDE and GNOME. If not, well then we've, we've at least we've, we've contributed a branch to the evolutionary tree here, even <laughs> if it turned out to be a live one. Sure, exactly. Yeah. But, but that's part of this process. We're trying to energize, energize the field, um, not, not claim that we have the... Uh, necessarily all the right answers. Exactly. The other thing that seems to be really popular is, is the green issues and power management and things. Mm -hmm. Quite a few specs on power management and boot speed. Yeah. Um, is that something that in increasingly is a, a beneficial uh, area to be working in? Well, I think, I think green issues and, and energy have been headlines du jour for, 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 for a year now. More importantly, I think there's been some fantastic work at Intel where the sort of Intel R&D team around open source sat down and said from a clean sheet, you know, what's possible? What can we do? And that spawned off a whole bunch of things. Intel did this five-second boot demo thing. So that's gotten everybody kind of chatting a little bit to do much faster boot. Um, they've also done a lot of work around power management, power top. 
And so that's sort of spawned people to ask the question, you know, how can we create an awareness in the developer community about the consequences, the energy consequences of our decisions? You know, so you could implement this this way, or you could implement this that way. They both look the same. If you weren't conscious about energy differences, you might pick either one. But if you were, suddenly you create some contrast there. Well, take the one that's much more efficient. And so that sort of, that sort of thinking is, 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 is increasingly pervasive in the team. Do you think it's possible for Ubuntu to make uh, a huge, to, to make itself a market leader in terms of being greener than other operating systems, or, or greener than other Linux-based operating systems? Um, well, um, I, think, I think one advantage that we have in our relationship with Debian is that we have a much broader base of expertise. So if we're able to socialize these ideas, we may well be able to get traction you know, across a much broader swath of the free software stack than traditional Linux guys can who, you know, who tend to have an expert who focuses on some key areas. So that's, that's one thing. Ultimately though, no, I don't think sort of greenness, greenness tends to be a kind of um, something everybody would like to say, everybody will say, and it's quite hard to prove and very hard to measure. So unfortunately, it's something that I think we should invest energy in, I think we should, should put time in, but I think it's not something that we could, we could you know, hit the ball out of the park on. We'll do as well as we can, working with Intel and others to, 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 to pull that expertise in. Um, uh, and, uh, um, and, and and we have something of responsibility to do as well as we can. You know, it would be terrible of us to ship software that, that burns CPUs at 400 watts when you know, they aren't mm -hmm. doing anything. Um, but I think, I think that the, there are other things that are more likely to be standout features when we get to 904 because they'll be more concrete, you know, they'll be very visible.